Uh, we'll, we'll go to that after this battle. And this is Midshipman Hornblower. He emailed this to me. Uh, and the reason I picked this replay is because with the Dutch cruisers coming out, we uh, we could take a look at the tier 5 version that a bunch of people are getting. Hey, Broken Trident. How you doing? And Duckman got himself a container. Nice. I need to go to drops, and I need to get my container too. Where is it? There it is. Mission number three. Okay. Alright. Yes, this game is a lot of bots, but that's okay. I mean, that's that's what bottom tier is, and to be quite honest, while Wargaming has said uh, otherwise... Hey, Kromoa! While Wargaming has said otherwise, I really do believe... Uh, that the reason why the achievements and flags were dropped is because people were farming achievements in tier 2, 3, 4, and 5. I think that was, I think that's the root of the problem. Um, they've also said that the other part of it was that using achievements as a mechanism for giving flags to people was, uh, you know, uh, taxing the system too much. Because essentially you need to have this code, if this, then give player that. And... Um, you know, we don't know how things work on the back end, but it very well could have been a, a bit of a mess with the spaghetti, spaghetti code, so. You've liked the Dutch cruisers, you played them, they seem okay despite the gimmicks? Good. It's hot as heck here, Trident. Uh, things are going fine with me. Where are you, Trident, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, right, exactly. There you go, Skyring. Yeah, right. You can farm Krakens easily, you can farm diehards easily. And so, you know, they were talking about farming um, uh, detonations. And, you know, I know people that would say, I got my daily detonation. Like, they literally wouldn't run with debt flags until they detonated. Um, and then they put them on for the rest of the day because they knew they couldn't get them again. But yeah, it does represent a minority of people. That has never made any sense to me. What, daily debt flags? I mean,. It just throwing away your oh. ship, and 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 the hopes that you know that you get detonated. It just no, yeah, you're not throwing away your ship. useful. I I get it, but that just makes no sense to me. You're not necessarily throwing away your ship. You're you're playing, you know, normally, and you know if you detonate, and let's be real, how many times have you seen somebody detonate that was almost dead anyways? You know, so. Like, I get it, a full I, health detonation. I wish detonation that had happened or... to me. All my detonations seem to happen when I've got a lot of HP to give. Because that's what you remember the most. But, I think uh, I've only been... Oh, in co-op, it happens a lot in Destroyers. I mean, mm -hmm. just, like, frequently getting detonated in Destroyers. Broken, you're in Vancouver. Okay. Yeah, you got the drought, and then you got the fire. Good luck, man. Um... Anyways, let's talk about the game. So the Celebes, uh, Celebes, Celebes is really fun at uh, at medium to long range as an HE spamming cruiser. You can kind of see him doing that here. Uh, although I don't know that you need to stick this this far back from the island because it's blocking a lot of your shells. Um, you do have the ability to farm things at long range, so that's kind of neat. Go a little bit farther forward, I think, would get you the angle that you would want. I've been struggling to figure out the airstrike mechanic because it doesn't seem to do for me what other people say it does. It takes a lot of time. Armor is abysmal. That's correct rating, Recon. This is your least favorite of the new ships. Is that because it doesn't have the Dutch airstrike? I actually liked it. I actually like playing this ship. Uh, and it's just because of the, the HE spammy spammy. And it's a playstyle I'm very comfortable with. It's a playstyle I'm very used to. Um, and the fact that it's uh, armor is kind of bleh. I mean, that's... It's a tier 5. It's like Omaha, others. I don't care. I mean, it's a tier 5 cruiser. They're all squishy. Mm-hmm. Ah, for those of you guys who missed it, we hit a level 5 hype train earlier. Gave away 5 CC containers. Looks like cool. people got some good flags, got some good subs. I'm drinking Oban 14 to celebrate. And we agreed we would go longer, so... We're coming up on 4 o'clock, which is the normal stop time for weekday streams, but... Level 5 hype train 
we do more. Because that's what you guys want is more. So, more. That bring me more. Drink a couple of those. Alt underscore seemed is now following. Hey. Alt seemed, thank you very much for the follow. Don't forget to hit exclamation point ticket. We do have some camo codes. We're going to give away some stuff here. You're practicing in your Perth on EU in preparation for tier 6 clan battles. Quad, if I can give you a, a suggestion, practice in something else too. Because I have a strong feeling that that Perth is going to be limited, or if not mm -hmm. completely banned, within a week. Uh, don't turn back out here. There's no need to turn back out here. Turn back in, because otherwise you're not going to get your shells on anything. Ooh, and Acosta. Uh, so... That is confirmed. The next climb battles are tier six again. Yes, yes. So fun times. You know, Wargaming is going to be monitoring the meta very carefully to make sure that uh, no ships are too popular. And with how popular the smoke crawling ships were last time tier six was, I'm frankly surprised that the Perth, Huanghe, and whatever the uh, um, the uh, uh, Indian ship is. I can't remember the, the tier 6 Indian Mysore. ship. Thank you, the Mysore. Because that also has crawling smoke. I'm surprised that those three weren't immediately banned along with uh, the Graf Bay. Hey, the thing about the Mysore, though, is it doesn't have torpedoes and it's got a lower rate of fire. Mm -hmm. So, I have a feeling that they're going to say that's, that's, that's a fair trade for not really regulating it. I think the vast majority of us are expecting to see carriers... Uh, Eric Lowenhart and Ryujo banned yeah. or limited, probably banned, or the switch to one carrier max being put in place. Uh, the graph has already been banned. I wouldn't be surprised Thank in the first God. week to see those three crawling smoke ships banned as well. And I know some people are talking about other ships, but I don't necessarily know that they'll go beyond that for the beginning. I, I mean, don't, I don't know that destroyers. There's no point in, in regulating any of them. T sixty one have such. T61 is mean, pretty strong at tier. It's but. pretty strong. I mean, but at the same time, I mean, I personally, Rage. I, I personally had better chance, you know, better chances playing Icarus than T61. Yeah, high rage. I I, I agree with you there. Um, that's something that I've sent and other CCs have sent to Wargaming as well for feedback. Why don't you just make it one of each type of ship and be done with it? Um, they don't like the thought of that. I think because and I think okay. Um, I think they don't like the thought of that because it means that, um, that you might have people that can't play simply because, you know, they only have this one type of ship to play and that's it. And then, you know, you're limiting. So, because I don't think they're doing rentals this season. I mean, I wouldn't see the need to success. Yeah. Well, that, to... right. They didn't do tier six rentals last season. Last time it was tier six clan battles, so. I don't recall anybody complaining about it. I mean, and to be fair, you know, looking at teams that are, you know, a low and hard, two or three grass bees, two or three smoke falling cruisers, plus a T-61 or an Icarus, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, that's, that's a frustrating meta and it's not fun to play. I'm not sure there's too many people that were happy with the tier six season i mean i you know my team in xpn did outstanding but that doesn't mean we had fun doing it mm -hmm. yep so um you could go into an a sea cap here but there's two battleships that are in the area so i don't like that thought i think it's you're better off focusing on long range spammy spam for right now That's right, Gary. Wang A is better than the Perth, yes. Oh, uh, yeah, it turns the anti air, right. And then uh, you do get the spotter, and you get the gun range too with the Perth, so. They, they both have their, their bonuses, benefits, but, you know, the gameplay style is for the most part the same, right? You pop your creep, you smoke, you go and you farm whatever ship is being spotted by the carrier, whether that's a battleship, whether that be a destroyer, what have you. I mean, if it hadn't have been for the, the AA changes and, and the and the rework, having Huang He in a tier six clan battle, you know, two years ago, would have been an absolute nightmare 
the carrier mm -hmm. driver. I mean, and it's not as good as it used to be. Obviously, no ship really is, but it's still fairly effective anti-air platform. Right. Way more so than Perth will ever be. Uh, Leander for clan battles? She's okay. Uh, she's got the smoke, she's got the heal, her uh, short fuse AP is really strong against destroyers and other weak armored cruisers. Yeah. But because it's only that one, it, it's that large area of puff, you get a little bit of room to maneuver, but you can't, uh, you, you can't relocate with it. Um, honestly, I, I think a London might be a better pick because it's got the 8 inch guns instead of the 6 inch. Mm. And it can shoot HE, but you want to try to find ways to shoot AP in that ship. I mean, that's why I made the uh, sound, is because, you know, it's it's not a horrible choice. Just unfortunately, there are better choices. I'm very glad Grosh Bay has been told to take a seat. Yeah. I don't like playing that ship. I mean, I'm okay in it, but I just, I hate playing it, so it's fine. Yeah, it's the same. I, I absolutely hate it. I mean, and its only real sticking point wasn't even its guns or its AA. It was 8km torpedoes with great arcs and the fact that it had so much AP plus a heal. Desta, why are all the better choices premium? Because the premium ships are meant to be unique ships and offer different play styles. <laughs> and unfortunately, Clan Battles is a game mode whether you consider it in-game or not is another story, but it's a game mode that highly rewards people who are able to min-max the crap out of their compositions. Uh -huh. So... You like the Tier 4 Dutch Cruiser carry? To get you to spend money. Well, sure. There's, I'm sure there's a monetization yeah. side of it too, of course. There almost has to be if they're not making money. Off it. Why do it? Yep. Dallas could work. Um, but the problem with Dallas is it doesn't have smoke. Cool, I'm gonna thank myself now for streaming so that I can get my own drop. It's always fun. That's funny. Dallas is not a bad choice. I mean, you know, it's, it's obviously, you know, it's, it's fairly squishy, but at the same time, it's tankier than people realize. And mm -hmm. while its reload's not, you know, the greatest in the universe for a, a, a tier 6 light cruiser, it has so many barrels. Right. And it's got hydro or defensive fire. I mean, it, for clan battles, it is a much more effective choice than it will ever be in regular randoms. Unfortunately, with the way clan battles work, um, again with the min maxi and everything like that, I think, I think the ability to smoke is going to be so important. Uh, it's going to be very difficult to play a non-smoke ship without it, which is unfortunate. Well, I, I don't disagree. I'm just. Yeah. differentiating between the modes and where yeah. it's going to be the most effective. What? I mean, it's most effective in ops. Right. One of my favorite um, tier 6 ships to play in, in anything, and, and hopefully I can play in clan battles, is Pensacola. I love that ship. I love the hell out of that ship. Uh, we had... Uh, Pensacola is a much more effective tier 6 comp you know, uh, competitive ship than people seem to understand. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, it's you know, got the crazy armor, and yeah, it's got the long reload on the guns, but oh my god, it's tankier than you realize from the bow, and those guns smack you silly. Mm -hmm. We had, I mean, if there was a ship outside the normal composition that gave us difficulties during the Pier 6 clan battle season, it was Pensacola. You know, it gets, you know, up on an island just where its front or its back guns can shoot at you, and you can't really get the breadth of the ship. That thing is hard to kill. Right. Pensa, the floating citadel, because nobody angles in it. Well, yeah, uh, but she's... What I love about Pensacola is that she's so narrow. Like, you can you can make her dance. I love it. And her AP is so great. She's got very strong anti-air, too. I think she's a great pick. Especially once that the crawling smoke BS is gone. Or mitigated, but probably... Look at it. Yes. I don't think it's going anywhere. Also, oof. Yeah, that's brutal. That is brutal. Very hard hitting AP. And 10 guns at tier 6? Holy hell.
You've seen rank people, Pensas and Rank just going broadside? Well, of course, because that's, I mean, <sighs> Pensacola is one of those, it, it's the first ship that really punishes you if you don't know how to ang right. I mean, the Omaha, angling doesn't mean crap because battleships overmatch you anyway, so you, you just you just learn to spam your shells and not care. But Pensacola is the first ship where you can actually bounce some, some battleship armor, or battleship guns, um, if you know what you're doing. Uh, if you know what you're doing. That's the hard part. Alright, let's go to Stream Raiders. I'm going to hasten everybody. We're going to do a 30 second uh, ad and then we're going to move to our next replay. What's our next replay? It is an Ibuki. I remember my first PvP round in Pensacola. It was, I, I forget the map. I think it was Estuary. Yeah? And I was... It was a standard battle, and I was, you know, the, the big island that's smack dab in the middle of, of both caps. I was kind of angled more bow than anything, up like a couple of kilometers short of that island so I could shoot over it. And I was just HE farming all their ships as they came by. And I, I burned out a Geniza now. And he goes into all chat. He's mad at me because I'm not playing Pensacola like everybody else does and sailing broadside so he can delete me. <laughs> there you go. Hey, Brand. Con... That was almost five years ago. Khan says Napoli for coal and doubloons. 34k doubloons, 242k coal. Just watched a video. Okay. Is Napoli out of NDA? Can I talk about it, Felipe? I'll have to check. Um, and by the way, you are going to get your Paladin scroll because I came in first, but I, I'm not going to give myself a scroll. I don't think I can. Doctor underscore Harlequin is now following. Uh, that. And then we want to go to here because this is a green chest. Loyalty token chest. So this could be a very good chest. This is a very hard battle. Make sure you bring some of your strongest units if you can. And let's make this happen. That's okay, SAT. It was a really good chat. We talked a lot about stats. We talked a lot about motivators. Um, and I think QuadQ understands better, like, the, the discussion and the context to why uh, the discussion was occurring. Um, it was it was really good. Actually, I think I'm going to split it into two different Zat chats. One about Unicum goals in the, battle, in the game, and then the other one just about stats in general and what stats mean and how stats work. I chase released a Napoli bit. Okay. Okay, so what is the Napoli again? It's, well, it's a cruiser, right? Give me a second to take a look and see if I can talk about it. I chase is pretty good about making sure that uh, he's, he's, you know, he's I just not breaking what class of ship it was. <laughs> an NDA, but I just want to be sure on my end. Um. And remember, guys, if, I, if I'm talking about a ship, it's from a CC perspective, not a super test coordinator perspective. Napoli. It's current time. UTC. It is currently 9.07 p.m. Add 12 hours to that, and that's 2,100 hours, correct? Okay. 9 p.m. to convert to military time, that's 2100. Yes, that's 2100 hours. Yeah. Um, so that's, yeah. So the end date dropped on her 